Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, July 8th, 2019. Uh, not a lot of significant developments to report today, but I'll do a quick update. Uh, we had uh, the SPY close down today 0.54%, uh, QQQ down 0.7%, and IWM uh, almost 1%, uh, negative 096 So we had a red day, but again, not a lot technically. Let me just recap uh, from... Uh, as an update to Friday's video, on Friday we had the breakdowns here. What I'm watching on the futures are these uh, rising wedge patterns, 60-minute charts, uh, complete with the divergent highs, everything else. So we had those breakdowns and a back test. And I think that's about, if I recall right, where we closed on Friday. And uh, we did overnight uh, on the weekend when futures opened up again on Sunday night and through the night. They went down a little and we had a little more fall through today. These lines here I added this morning uh, on the updates on rightsideofthechart.com an additional support or one line here uh, 29.73 and you can see it's just a minor support level uh, right there you have a couple reactions there there and of course the uh, Friday's low so that's a level and as I mentioned um, that's minor support and if that breaks that probably brings us down here uh, to my next target at uh, 29.55 or so uh, I do want to add and I mentioned this on the site again we have Jerome Powell speaks twice this week on Wednesday and then again on Thursday and right now fundamentals absolutely don't seem to matter to this market nothing seems to matter but what the Fed is doing it seems to me that um, more so at many points in uh, at many other points in the past the, the market is hyper focused right now on what the Fed's going to do so uh, you know I didn't check before this update oh let me let me check it I, I did the update this morning on the uh, few Fed fund futures and I'll do it right now. I'm looking at another monitor. Okay, they yeah changed slightly. So here's here's what we're looking at for the uh, July 31st Fed meeting. Right now, the Fed fund futures are pricing in a 94.1% probability of a 25 basis point rate cut and a 5.9% chance of a uh, 50 basis point rate cut. So that's the consensus and again if, if um, you know Powell if they're gonna do more or less he's gonna try to walk the market down Fed uh, doesn't like to surprise the market and so really what I'm trying to get at here is you don't you probably won't see a lot happen until at least Wednesday and again I don't know if we'll say anything different uh, I think uh, what is it Thursday so that that's what we're watching for this week now technically we can sit here all day long and guess what the Fed's gonna do not do uh, I'll take the charts on face value so right now we do have these breakdowns they're not very impulsive and there we are at support so uh, at least on the 60 minute chart with the breakdowns uh, PPO is below the zero line that is a you know a sell signal on ES but I'm gonna show you here some well let's just jump right to it um, some uh, contradictory evidence I always say you know in these updates I'll usually include the futures uh, that's NQ, at least the large caps NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500 and then also look at the charts because uh, you know the SPY and uh, SPY is tracking the S&P 500 QQQ is tracking the NASDAQ 100 these are what traders trade as well and um, so if you want to confirm a sell signal you want to see them all break down uh, you want to see the uh, SPY breakdown QQQ the futures especially when the trend is up so right now we have this bullish uptrend so I wanted to point out that uh, although all the futures or at least NQ and, and ES have broken down we don't have comparable breakdowns in in the spy. If you want to split hairs, you can see there's a small candlestick here. I'll zoom in tight below there, but that is is the exact opposite of what you want to see to confirm a breakdown. You want to see a breakdown uh, with an impulsive candle moving down, you know, impulsively a big red candle like that, and a follow through. So this is uh, anything but impulsive. So to my in my book, that's not a breakdown. That's just you know futures you know, or the spy just limping down you know we gap down and traded sideways all day so again like I said nothing nothing big and no confirmation yet this spy hasn't broken down if the spy breaks down you can see there's some targets and then that would give us at least on the 60 minute charts uh, some sell signals now it's all in place here the charts are indicating that and you can have the divergences same stuff you know wash rinse repeat just like we had divergences building 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 here then you had a breakdown right there that that smaller wedge that was your sell signal right there uh, so 
that's what the SPY is doing now. We broke from the smaller wedge recently. That wedge played out to about the measured target, and now we're walking up this larger wedge defined by this uptrend line and that extension, the uh, second divergent high, which is really just a, you know, an extension of the previous divergences. So that's what we need to see. So we don't have a sell signal in SPY, although QQQ, ES and NQ have all broken down. There's QQQ breakdown, fairly impulsive with the gap down today, but then no follow through. You can see we just kind of drifted around sideways all day. So that's it. Make of it what you will. Um, as far as these trend indicators go, the uh, the 9 EMA is still trading above the zero line there. So, you know, work to be done to really firm up these sell signals. And that work would be first a break of 188.37. It's pretty decent support. That would get us into the gap right there and likely at least go in for a gap backfill. There's the top of the gap right there, that line. And maybe on down here, and that would also flip over these uh this trend indicator, the uh signal line there that nine e m a as you can see the white line when it crosses below zero and remains below the trend is bearish, pretty simple stuff, and when it's above crosses above and remains above like it did this entire time, the trend is bullish. So that's that's what we're looking at right now. A little whipsaw there. Like I always say, no, nothing's perfect as far as trend indicators go. But as of now, it has us in a bullish trend, and it tells us that trend is in jeopardy. We're at resistance on QQQ, the previous highs, and uh, the divergence is everything else. So that's still my favorite scenario. Uh, but the markets, uh, we may not, we may have another sleeper day tomorrow. We'll see, unless some other kind of news moves things uh, before Powell speaks. And here's NQ, the NASDAQ 100 futures. There's that comparable trend line to the one I showed you on uh, ES. And there's our wedge, our divergence lines right here. And divergences have been building. There was a breakdown. We had that uh, move down there, the little flagging on Friday. Breakdown, back to us. That's where we closed Friday. And as you can see, uh, the NAS uh, NQ, NASDAQ 100, has been moving lower since and closed down today. As I said, uh, the Qs, QQQ closed down 0 0.70, and you can see down here about a 0.62% close because they trade at different hours, uh, the opening. Uh, so a little bit uh, oh, about a comparable move, and that's it. So you can see support there, and just like on QQQ, or was it SPY or both, I pointed out, we have these gaps below. So there's your gap support right there gaps typically once entered or backfilled so that's something you want to watch for and again we'll pick this up tomorrow RTY or the small caps uh, that's the the futures for the uh, Russell 2000 I could you know I'm not crazy about any of these trend lines because there's not a lot of reactions but you can see I have these uh, triangle patterns I have this one here and this one has a few more reactions in fact of the two this one will be more valid this trend line here so here let me clean that up and show you uh, because we have, you know, right here, one, two, three, four reactions on this lower trend line. Uh, so there's a little symmetrical triangle pattern. These are symmetrical triangle patterns can break either direction. So you want to watch, you know, an upside break. However, an upside break, I would not jump the gun on that on a long because you have a pretty decent resistance here, about 1582 right there. Uh, you can see that resistance line going back, capping a lot of the recent advances. So, um, that would be bullish for the small caps, especially if the large caps confirm where a downside break, as you can see, I have uh, these targets down here. And ultimately, I would expect a move down here. So I'm still leaning toward, it's still favoring that downside scenario, make no mistake about it. It's priced into the charts, in my opinion. Uh, and that's where I think we're going, but uh, we'll see. Uh, again, what uh, Powell does this week is certainly going to have an impact on, on where the markets go. but. Uh, you know, the technicals are saying that the uh, most likely uh, the next move from here is to the downside. And so those are some near term targets. And then to wrap this up, just a quick look at the uh, daily charts. No need to go into the weekly charts right now. Nothing's changed since the last, uh, last update I did on Friday. Uh, it's what we're looking at right now. Here's those uptrend lines you can see on SPY, that wedge that we're on. Like I said, we didn't break down. And you can see, especially when you look at the daily candles, if you come in tight here, uh, you can see we do not have a, a breakdown there yet. But that is a level to watch. So we break that level. You can see uh, just as before with every other high. I mean, that's been the pattern of these markets. Come on, push on up, make a marginal new high, followed by big correction, big correction big correction each time it makes a marginal new high and that's all this is so far and uh, as I've you know highlighted recently you know this market you know although at this point we're trading at or just you know just off all-time highs 
it's it's really a matter of a market that's gone absolutely nowhere. There's been a lot of big moves in the last year and a half, but if you look at grab this high back here from January and uh, to where we close today, the measuring tool pops up to that on the box on the left down towards the bottom in green. Uh, so the S&P 500 is up about 3%. Uh, if you look at the S&P 500 equal weighted index, uh, I believe that's even less. If that, that backs out the big impact that Apple and, and a lot of those overweighted uh, names have, uh, you can see as of today's close, we're about, well, if I hit it exactly, somewhere right around 1%. So, and that is uh, almost a year and a half, 1.4 years. So there it is. It's a it's a go-nowhere market. Not exactly go-nowhere. It's had a lot of big rips and dips since then. But again, it's uh, that's the story there. And when you look at the Dow, same story. Yeah, Dow is up, what is it, about uh, 1%, I think it is, in the last, uh, you know, almost a year and a half there. No, less than that. As of today's close, it's up about three quarters of a percent. So that's the story. And, uh, you know, where the opportunities lie, you know, where most of, you know, my money is and the trade ideas on the site, we're looking to add commodities, uh, you know, agricultural commodities, other things that have strategic trading ops. Some are swing trading ops, trend trading, uh, natural gas, gold. Gold should be setting up for the next uh, buy point soon. Looking for a little more downside there. We'll cover that tomorrow for members. Um, but like I said, the stock market is uh, kind of in sleep mode right now. But set up, like I said, the technicals when you put on the lines, look at everything, look at these divergent highs uh, and the pattern that it's it's been making. Uh, I still feel pretty confident that the next major move, I'm talking the next 10% move in either direction will uh, most likely be to the downside. So we'll wrap it up here and keep an eye on those 60-minute charts. And again, uh, Hopefully, hopefully by Wednesday after Powell's first speech, then we'll, uh, the market will be able to pick a direction. And then uh, we'll, we'll pick it up from there. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.